Hey gang, Scott here. Uh, welcome to this next video in our series on blending modes in On One software. This is On One Photo Raw, On One Effects. This video is talking about the difference blending mode. I'll explain what it is and the one case where I do use it from time to time. Now, if you're not familiar with blending modes, check the show notes. There is a link down there with a playlist for all of the videos in this series. And uh, yeah, the new videos add to the playlist as we go here. And the, the first one, I'll talk about blending modes in general. And the goal is for me to give you like a couple of recipes for each blending mode when they might be useful for you in your processing. Also, if you are thinking about adding on one to your toolkit or upgrading your current software, use my offer code. It'll save you a little bit of money. Give me a little bit of support and you know, win-win lets me do more videos like this. So the difference blending mode, uh, this one is like straightforward to understand its name difference. It will show you the difference between two layers. And this is when I will use this in a layered workflow. I can't really say I've used this mode in the effects modules, like using you know, effects and then flipping to difference. Maybe there's a use case for it. Uh, I, I haven't gone and sought one out, but the one place I do use it is in layering and it's to help with manually aligning layers. Uh, so let me show you what difference does so you can really get a feel for what it's doing. And uh, then I'll show you the use case here. All right, let's first get some layers going here. And to explain what difference is doing, I'll just duplicate this layer. So we have the same exact image twice. Right? So there should be zero difference between these two photos. And if we take our top layer and switch the blending mode to difference, that's exactly what we see, a completely black screen. Black means no difference between the two layers. And this is a pixel by pixel basis. And anything else means there's some kind of difference. So for example, if we're still in the difference blending mode, this is gonna get a little weird. Uh, I'll tell you what, let, let, so it's not too weird. Let me take the transform and I'm moving this up and to the right, right? So you now we can see here's the root 66 sign on the, on the left and we've, we've moved this thing over here. Wonderful. Uh, now, if I switch this to the difference blending mode, we're going to see all sorts of differences, right? Because the pixels on the top layer are different than the pixels on the bottom layer. And so this is, you know, it's a, it's a weird looking kind of blend, right? I mean, it has this, this case, it has like this weird photo negative kind of look for it. So I suppose maybe there's some options here to, to create some kind of very stylized effect. But what difference is doing is looking at the top layer and comparing it to the bottom layer, pixel by pixel. If the pixels look the same, you know, same shading, same color, same luminosity, you get black. If they're you know, completely different, you'll get white and then anything else in between. So great, wonderful. How is this actually useful? Um, well, I find it most useful for manually aligning layers. Sometimes I'll do a, a layer alignment and it's great. And other times, it's a little bit off and you can do things manually using the difference blending mode to help you get a perfect alignment or at least as close to perfect as you can possibly get. So let's look at that example. You might remember this photo from the Lighten blending mode video. Uh, you can check that one out if you haven't seen it. But I have two images here, top and bottom layers of the, the same scene with you know different lighting and I've used the Lighten blending mode to help me get uh, a particular look on the uh, on the lights here. But what I want to point out here is the difference blending mode. These two photos are pretty well aligned. If I, if I switch the blending option from normal to difference, to measure difference in the photo, I'm going to zoom in on this very dark area up here because in normal, this is where the seams of the building are, right? What the difference blending mode lets me do is sanity check how well are my photos aligned? Now I can use auto align layers in Photo Raw to line everything up and just have it auto detect. And you know, it works really well. Most of the time, every once in a while, there might be something off. Or if you're working handheld, you, know, you may have just slight variations in your angle, like pitch and yaw and so forth, where you can't get a perfect alignment just by the nature of the photos you've taken. But you can use the difference blending mode to sanity check it and if you need to adjust position to get perfect alignment or as perfect as you can get it. 
Let me zoom out here. I'm still looking at the difference between the top layer and the bottom layer. And the goal for perfectly aligned layers is as much black as possible. That means no differences. Now I can reach the transform tool and to, to prove the point, I'm going to push this around. You can start to see differences right now. I've got differences because I've unaligned those edges of that building and I see all sorts of difference. And if I'm working this, I'm just clicking and dragging around to move things into place. I'm trying to get as close to black as possible. I can also use the arrow keys to gently shift the top layer around. And as I move it around, the difference blending mode is measuring the differences between the two. And you can get as close as you possibly can. You know, again, your target is to get as much black as possible. You'd use this option, this difference blending mode, only if align layers didn't work for you or you're not certain did it work well. You can flip on difference mode and check to see. Always remember that though, when you're shooting in you know, the outside world and heck, even in, even in studio, there's going to be variations in light. Uh, the photos I'm blending here, you know, taking a couple of minutes apart. So I, I will not ever expect to see 100% pure black like we saw when I blended a photo with itself. But just using the difference blending mode to get me as close as possible, you know, that's pretty good if I hadn't had a, a really good alignment like I did. I shot on a tripod, so it was pretty great. I'll go ahead and hit the apply there. And then I can switch back to normal, or if you watch the light and blending mode, this is what I really wanted was lighten to get the city lights to pop up. That's going to give me a good photo. But just remember when you're using difference, it will measure the different pixels between the two layers and visualize them. If they're non-black, there's a difference in some way, shape, or form. Uh, you're looking for as close to black as possible, and just know that it's not going to be perfect because lighting will change between photos. So, uh, you know, use difference to help get you uh, as close as you possibly can. I think I've said that enough times in this video. Uh, that's going to do it for difference blending mode. Hope you enjoyed the video. Got questions, drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.